All right. Hello. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. And thank you for joining to Neo4j Live. Uh, today we covered the potential of LLMs and knowledge graphs through visualization. So I'm very much looking forward to uh, today's episode. I'm happy to have two guests here with me. It's uh, Dienert Vieira and Ben Guzman. Uh, hi, Dienert and Ben. Ben, how's it going? Hi. It's going good. How about you? Yeah. Good, I'm doing well. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm I'm very much looking forward to, to today's episode. I think I mean we, we talked um, about you know potential of LLMs and knowledge graphs in, in, in all kinds of uh, fashion uh, these these couple months I, I, I would say. Um, and we always kind of like covered uh, visualization as as part of it, but never really made it the the, the centerpiece. And I'm I'm very much a big fan of, of of graph visualization. I think it's 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 a great way of of exploring data. It's a great way of of making making data more more you know be better to understand what's there. Better better helps you understand what what, what you can do with it. Gives you more more insights uh, much much quicker than than uh, other way. So I'm. I'm a huge fan, so I think that's that's going to be very very interesting today to see. Okay, how how can you combine this 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 generative AI, the RAG, LLMs kind of kind of world developments that have recently come up with, with uh, with you know all, all all kinds of AI tools uh, have 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 been re released, and now combining this with with visualization, with giving it a you know almost say an, an another spin to the story to to add more detail, to add more more insights and to to make a little bit more from the data to add to it but also to to have the power and the possibility to be to be creative so i think that's that's what i i kind of like hope for today but you know i'll i'll, I'll let myself be be surprised as well and i'm very happy to to have you two uh, as the as the experts to to talk about this topic and to to uh, you know give us give us uh, some insights and your own opinions and, and you, from your experience, what, what you would say is a good way of, uh, of how to do that kind of um, exercise. Um, if, if you're watching this live, then obviously I encourage you all to, to ask questions, to give comments, use the chat function as, as much as possible um, to make this interactive. We have some time towards the end or sometimes in between. So if, if a question comes up or if you just want to comment on something, then please don't be shy. It looks like we lost Dinat now. So um, hopefully he'll be back in a, in a second. Did you, did you see anything? Or do you, Ben, do you know? <laughs> did you hear? <laughs> did you hear? <laughs> oh, here, here. Uh, you're due too kind, Alexander. Oh, there he is. Um, there he is. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> and that connection is, was lost. No problem. Cool. I think we are, I mean, I, I kind of like, I maybe you two uh, say a few words before we dive in and, and, and go on with the content. Maybe, I don't know, Ben, do you want to start uh, and, and say a few words of who you are, what you do, uh, and, you know, maybe what what is your connection to to graphs yeah sure thanks alexander um hey everyone i'm ben kusman i'm a senior software engineer at kinaviz um, i've been working with them since 2020 uh, and i've been having a really good time learning about graph visualization you're, you're a little too kind to call us experts but i, <laughs> I like to think we know a thing or two I, i'm sure um, <laughs> uh, yeah i work heavily on Kinaviz's graphics R and SideXR, which Dinner will be showing off. And um, yeah, really excited for this talk. Cool. <laughs> uh, how about me? I have one year of Kinaviz and I'm an AI engineer and I'm working with the team providing new functionalities to graphics R and developing SiteXR as well as we can. <laughs> Um, I try to get the, the slides here in just a moment. Uh, I'll post link to graphics are in the chat. So if anybody is, is interested, then uh, check it out. There's also a couple of other links in the video description. So if you are watching this later or you want to know more about it, then there is, there's a couple of other videos that, um, the team has already prepared and, uh, as a blog as well. So okay. if you, if you want to know more, 
then uh, check those out in the video description. And here is your desktop. Yes, perfect. Yes. Um, so we are starting talking about the potential of LLMs and knowledge graphs through visualization. And we have this agenda. Uh, we are going to talk about Kinevis SiteXR, the new extension, uh, AI explainability through graph, creating a knowledge map, and the visual exploration using that. Um, to start, we have uh, create a knowledge map to for fast navigation and document view in two steps. Automatically parse entities and their relationships with open source LLMs and open AI. So not only open AI, but we have uh, other open models to execute this task and engage with results through natural language and Q&A and summarization. And we have the poll model. This is the person, object, uh, location, and events. This is the standard entities we have. And this is a result of one extraction of these entities and the relationships between them. So what we want to achieve with all of this, we want explainability AI. Explainable, explainable AI. Uh, we have to understand why some entities were extracting, why the, uh, these LLMs indicate those types of relationships between those entities. And we have one special entity, this is observation, that tries to, to explain a little bit how is done that relationship. And we can frame the context displayed that the AI produced as an outcome of nodes called observation that linked back to the source documents. And we can see for every type of entity how they are related. Before going on, we, I would like to talk about some uh, articles we have produced, like Anna. We, our data scientist has written about the case against Trump, a guide, and she has hosted local LLMs and extracted some entities and used Mistral 7B for that and OpenAI chat GPT. And another blog post I, I have uh, written about exploring the Enron data set. This is a huge data set for 20 years ago and uh, a bankruptcy and only two CEOs and how are the exchange of emails between the employees of the company and other, other people. Um, also, the whole workflow, the data flow is from the application we have the import we just drag and drop on structured data like a PDF, uh, text, or a mail, uh, Word document, slides, whatever unstructured data you have. And we start extracting the entities from, from this text and highlighting them. And we can use the poll model or create our own entities like any other entity and the definition of those entities, like dep depending on the business model you have. Since we imported a folder, a file, a whole structure of files, we, we split these documents into chunks and these chunks are vectorized so we can talk to them. So we chat with them using the LLMs. And then we visualize them in the uh, GraphXR is our platform for visualizing graph graph uh, charts now. And we save all of this in a database like Neo4j, and we present that in GraphXR through SiteXR, this new extension. So this is a, a view of the chat. We can talk to anything. I, I will present a bit about the demo. And, and that's it. I think we can uh, show a little bit how this works in practice. In practice. 
Sounds good. Yeah, that's uh, that's very cool. I, I posted the the link to the blog posts, uh, or well, at least to your Medium blog, in the chat as well, so people can find them if they look for things. Here's your screen. Okay, this is the the screen of GraphXR, and this is this is the default view, and this is a uh, the view of SiteXR. I'm going to show uh, a drag and drop here. Uh, but I, I you will not see the files, but just I'll, I'll, I'll show you here as another screen. Can I add another screen? And, uh, uh, you can, you, well, not, I don't let think me you try, can. I think let you me just... show you it here. Yeah. Like this. I don't have another mon. I am not. If I'm on, this is the data source I'm going to upload. It's just markdowns like uh, murder mystery game. Uh, there is uh, the clues how the murder behaves. And this is all the characters we have. There are suspects. And we have to find out who is the, the murderer. And mm, let's okay. just drag and drop these files into into the the SiteXR extension and see what what do we get so i'm dragging now the file i think you cannot see but i i just left some some files in this area yeah, the folder and the file just drag and drop, and this started here uh, vectorizing the sources, and you can see here the content, the same content I showed you, and you can see the clues, and it has already vectorized. You can chat with them, but uh, before doing that, I'm going to execute the knowledge extraction. We can run uh, with the default categories. Or we can edit and create new categories and the definitions. And I will just run the default, the default poll model here. This is personal organization, location, and events from all sources. While we show that, I'm going to click on clues. This is our source visualizer. And we can see the same content of the file I showed before. And we have all of this. And since the knowledge extraction is running now, processing nodes, we can see the result of each uh, entity being detected in the, in the file. So now we have the entities. They detected the murderer, the cat, the pet spider, <laughs> the dog. Cool. And we Does can the, is, see... Is this working with, with any kind of file or do you need a... Any kind of file. Specific, any kind of file, okay. That's very good. PDFs, emails, Word documents, yeah. text yeah. files. And we can see here the observations. There are the the relationship between the, the entities and how they behave. You can visualize this for a start. So here we have GraphXR, the default with the extraction. We can delete the source and also the chunk. I will show the chunk here for, 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 ex, for example, is chunk could be uh, a lot of pieces of the the file. It, it's going to be split in many chunks so we can run on the LLM and extract mm -hmm. from, in, from each chunk the entities and the relationships from these chunks. And how, This is a small file, so we have only one chunk here. But we could have many chunks, and I'm, I'm going to delete it here. And I can see here how is the relationship. I'm going to organize a little bit for for a, cell, a better visualizing, I'm going to show as a ring ring layout. And we can show in many ways, like we can, if we click in the murder and present as a tree layout, we have a better visualization for that. 
and I can also select them and visualize completely this. Okay, so the murderer may have flirting with someone, is not married, marriage, <laughs> is only child, enjoys. We can start to investigate our crime, our murder mystery, and see asking like questions about who is murder, who, who is who is married uh, instead of that. Let's chat here and say who is married. Let's see what we get. Mm -hmm. This is going through the LLM and now we get the answer. So the first paragraph, so there is always a warning saying that AI can make mistakes and consider checking information. So our answers are based on references and we have all the sources here. So who is married can refer to states a murder is not married. So. Uh, we have here uh, other ways to find our answers, but the murder is not married, indicating they are currently not married in marital status. The right is close. There are contexts that are close related to this answer. And we have some answers here, but this is not a, a good help for, for us now. But let's try to search in the index like we have here a search in the graph. If I search with this icon, I'm searching only in what I have in the graphs, like Mary, marriage. I, I can search it directly through Neo4j if I click on this database. So I don't have an index now. I'm going to create the index. So. Let's try to mm. oh, now we have the properties, all the, the categories, and we can select like label from any content label, label location, object. Organization, person, relationship, source, content, label. Uh, we are creating the index so we can search in the database. And observation, content. I think that's all we need for now. I'm creating the index and submitting. Okay, now we have the index and we can search in the database. So, Mary, uh, the index is still being created. Marriage. Let's see if I forgot something here. I think chunk, I forgot the content. Sometimes it takes a while, I guess, to, to create yes, yes, the, um, the, the index. So maybe just need a little bit patience. Um, let's try for while it's creating, we can try the the chat, the search yeah. here. What what the kind of here. what kind of AI did, did you or did you did you integrate this with? Uh, we use OpenAI and yeah. Yep. So now we have here the yeah maybe happily a married chat, maybe a refresh also helps. <laughs> yeah, oh yes, yeah. you can try that. Yeah. 
rebuild the, rebuild the computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe later. <laughs> so let's see, Mary. Oh, now it works. So okay. we have the two chunks here. Happily married. Let's bring again the 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 source of the murder, the clues, visualize, delete again the source and the chunk, visualizing the, the tree. Okay, I, I was going to ask about marriage because I, I know the murder is not married. Mm -hmm. And I know here, we have one chunk from the main character and another chunk from the clues. This is what we already have, the, the chunk from, from the clues and the chunk from, from the main character. It's another, if I expand that, if I click on right click button and expand, I can see mention the relationship and expand and see we have the main character is a person extracted from the source main character. And you see here that plays a role. You can expand all the, all the mentions from the, and you can see a key here in the chunk. that he is happily married so we can uh discard the main character as a suspect mm -hmm. i'm yeah. taking notes here of <laughs> who is suspect and who isn't it is bad too because i don't have a second screen but you you're going to ask anything no 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 uh, all good yeah but that's okay. that's helpful so we already know that we can already rule one out. <laughs> so now I'm going to ask in the chat, we have here uh, flirting with someone, marriage, only child, card games, fancy car, drives a fancy car. So we are going to ask in the, the chat who, who drives a car. And this is going to use our sources, observations, entities, and answer the question. Like the first paragraph is a summary. And we have here, who drives a car? Based on the given context, we can determine that the writer drives a hybrid car. We can click on it okay. and visualize. Mm -hmm. Visualize a uh, pool. The writer, the writer drives a car. We can also click on the reporter drives a eco-friendly car. The performer drives a fancy eating car, eating gas eating car, and the antagonist. And also the co-star drives. So we have one, two, three, four, five suspects that drives a car. And the, this narrows down our investigation to yeah. ten, did from 10 to 5 and then it even we says can... fancy cars or maybe potentially the eco friendly yes. car is maybe to be ruled out <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> so i'm going to pull this is here if i click in center it's already here Mm -hmm. So, pull the reporter, center to the reporter also, pull the performers, center to the performer, and also, so we have here also the co-star.
Mm. So what else can we, we ask about? And we have uh, we have also a uh, entity uh, resolution. Like we when we when we extract and as we have many chunks, entities can be duplicated, and we have uh, a, a system of entity resolution to to. Uh, merge some entities like we have here if we ask for if we search for card games let's go to to the entities what we have card games here we can search for similar similar relationships and see if we have any any other that could be merged to that. Mm -hmm. Let's try to expand here from observation, see if you have other ones. No, we don't. Mm. Sometimes uh, the, the system extracts different entities and other times we have, we can, we can have that. Uh, but this time I only have one. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean that's that's yeah. It's probably because this is auto generated or AI generated, so sometimes they, yes, they change yes. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. So we have here other things like uh, the mother doesn't like to take in other people's pictures. Let's ask a question to. It's a very specific. <laughs> <laughs> yes, can... we, we can yeah. we can narrow down very fast if we we ask the right questions. So who yeah. doesn't like to take pictures pictures of the others? Oops. So it takes a little while. Yeah. Maybe while well, this loads, maybe we can quickly answer a question that come, came up a couple of times. If people want to try this themselves, what's the best way to go about to... Um... Yeah, I can take that yeah. question. Uh, you, can, you can contact us. Um, we can start a conversation about that. We don't have a public trial at the moment. Okay. But... Um, you can email me at ben at com. Cool. Yeah, we have here. Oh, now we have some answers here. So based on the given context, the person who doesn't like to take pictures of others is the writer. <laughs> they hate being in the front of the camera and enjoy taking funny pictures of their cat. In other contexts, uh, we can conclude that the mother does not like. So the writer does not like the picture. Right? So, uh, yes. So we can we can keep keep the writer. Yes. Mm. What else can we? talk about like jail who has been to jail <laughs> let's search <laughs> let's search the index and see what we get from from jail you have location here mm -hmm. label and chunk we can expand from all these chunks we have the coi star the antagonist you see i'm seeing it here on the the name of the URI, mm -hmm. so the we can bring all of them here and see. From this, we can get the 
dimensions. You can see the main character, the antagonist and the core star. And we can try to, to map more things like Let me see if I have if I have more things in the source of the core star. So it there is it has not been detected directly in the first place, but we can see some suggestions of entities to, that has, have been detected. We can accept that, that suggestions of okay. entities. And now we can see from this what have been mentioned. So all of these, oh, nice. oh, that's why, that's why I wasn't finding the card. So like here, I have card games, but I can click on, on the entities like, um, camera, location, event, occupation, observation activity card games we can click on card games and see there is also another card games that events when we can merge them mm -hmm. if we merge them we can now expand if we have the card games here If I delete this and expand again, now we have a relationship between oh, different okay. chunks yeah. and we can see that uh, the murderer, the murderer that enjoys playing card games so the the core star also and he drives an expensive car <laughs> <laughs> yes he he's not our very number one suspect. now <laughs> <laughs> mm. and we can go on and expand our, our investigation and see everything we, we need. And we I have shown most of the features now. And if you have any questions, like we can try to keep on trying to solve the, the mystery or we can answer questions, whatever. We, we could answer, there's one, one question from David, um, more on technicalities a little bit. He asks, when does the response enter the Neo4j database? Is the whole visualization on Neo4j? And when you click on pull and you move part of the response to Neo4j, is that, yeah, well, how does it work? Technically, I guess he wants to know how how, how does the, the how, what's the connection? How does it work to get the, the data visualized on the uh, on the screen? Yes, uh, we we have a fun functionality that is the expand, and we we run cipher queries underneath that are getting the connections between the that and the, those categories, and we uh, bring from the database from Neo4j, and uh, we we uh, construct the graph accordingly to the properties that these categories have. Mm -hmm. So. We can customize everything here, and I think if this is if this answers the question. Yeah. So, so this is basically a website web application that runs on on top of it, um, on yes, it's connected yes. to a 
I guess, OpenAI API into Neo4j database, and then you you query either way. Yes, exactly. Yeah, cool. Um, so we have here like another question that could help us answer better the question. And if we look for tap water, that's, let's see. So we see that the writer does not drink tap water and the clues, the murder does not like to drink tap water. Mm -hmm. hmm. And we can continue our investigation and see if we find the, the murder. And we have uh, some suspects, but hmm. let's see. Playing cards, who else play cards? The co star and the murder mister, the murder. Let's see, Jayu. Never been to. Never been to is the murderer. And has never been to also, is also the co star. <laughs> <laughs> Then the Coistar had have has never been to jail also. Let's see. Clumsiness. Let's ask to the to the who is clumsy. That's running again. Yeah. Okay, who is clumsy? The question, the query, who is clumsy? We have to the context where it's mentioned that the core star <laughs> is burned from a bar, bar possibly because of the clumsiness. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> And mention the characters who is described as clumsy. All, all of this context says so the course are the writer, a little bit clumsy, the reporter, the costume designer and the murder, the clues. So I think that's it. I think most of it leads to the <laughs> core star. Yeah. <laughs> we can go on, but I don't be tedious on, on the investigation. And hey, the internet, and... you showed the difference between the related to graph and the observation graph. Oh, yes, that's good. Like you, can, you can toggle that. We, yeah. Here we have the observation graph and the related to graph, because when we click on, on that, we will hide the observations. And only the relation di directly to them is going to be kept on the map it oh, simplifies nice. a lot mm -hmm. the map yeah so if everything that's not really relevant goes away yeah. yes and you can show the relationships like the name also uh, related to and content relationship caption cool This simplifies a lot our mm. graph. 
but for interaction and display uh, display it's sometimes uh, observation helps a, a bit yeah absolutely I, I can imagine that you know if i mean this is this is a now an easier example that we that we showed but you know if you if you have more complex things where there's there's many many nodes on the screen and many many relationships exactly, and, exactly. you know usually it becomes a bit confusing and you don't really understand what's going on anymore even though it's supposed to help you but when, when it's when it's really a lot then and if you can identify okay what's the important the relationships who are the important uh, nodes and then you you can show that and you know that that helps a lot yes uh, i'm just uh, i finished here i think that's that's all i i had yeah if you have any questions we are available that's cool thank you very much um so we had a couple of questions i think ben already answered a couple in the in the chat i don't know if you um ben if you want to add more to it verbally instead of uh typing so i think there was a question on what kind of different technologies used um for this so vector databases graph databases and obviously uh llm connectors i don't know do you want to do you want to sh share a bit yeah yeah i can touch on the architecture yeah under underlying um we use neo4j to store all the nodes and edges the entities observations and source documents um we use quadrant as a vector db uh, to do semantic search on your text and observations and entities and uh, Redis is, is a really handy key value store for app settings and, and the queuing architecture. And uh, we have a, a queuing architecture which uh, handles all imported files and sends that through vectorization processes and knowledge mapping processes which orchestrate the, the calling of the LLMs of which we support uh, OpenAI, Olama, Light LLM, uh, which is a proxy server behind that you can put in front of Azure OpenAI, uh, which we use heavily, and OpenAI and other uh, language model providers. Um, did I miss anything? No, no. That sounds that sounds right. <laughs> cool. That that's 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 very helpful. Thank you. And um, another question comes from uh, Rodrigo. Do you think it's possible to apply SiteXR in a scenario that where you have lots of PDFs and want to find intersections uh, as a semantics? Bit is among... exactly the point of what we are trying to do because of the merge functionality and try to uh, intercept uh, those entities extracted from many chunks different chunks many different documents and and see what we get from this result and we can relate and ask questions to the same the same entities yeah that's cool yeah that's 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 cool um tony asks exporting the json so i guess can once you've done with the visualization or the identify when we have identified our murder let's let's keep in the in, in the data set can we can we can we export the results in some fashion that we can say okay here is is here is our murder and this is why kind of uh, yeah i can take that um graphics are as support for taking screenshots or exporting a csv uh there's a couple options available okay cool all right. Uh, another question here: Is it possible for a fine-tuned LLM to make it as API so that it can be easily accessible anywhere? Well, I, I think I know what that means. Yeah. Um, so, since we have support for a llama or a light LLM, if the LLM that you fine-tune has support for the OpenAI spec. Uh, then OpenAI, then the Light LLM proxy server uh, or Olama can help uh, make your LLM available from anywhere. Okay. 
uh, we just answer the see that we just we just answer that uh, how the results are exported or do you wanna do you wanna quickly show that Dinat? how to export yeah maybe show the csv export or or taking a screenshot or take it yeah take a screenshot yeah i mean so people know Or maybe we, we table that for for yeah later. maybe table that one yeah yeah um, but yeah it should, shouldn't be too difficult to to get to get the the the, the results exported in a in a, in a, in a you know, easy fashion and if it's a no, CSV no. file then you can, that, that, you can let's try to do that yeah thank you for <laughs> expanding our murder mystery skill yeah I think that's good but you know all, all it's all it's all fun here but i mean you, we can talk a little bit about uh the, this i mean if if you are imagine you are a, a visual um, you know insurance company or a bank or some kind of in, in a, some some other fraudulent uh in, in endeavor then um i think this could be great to find out okay who is who is uh who is actually who is the actual owner of of the of the of the thing that's supposedly broken or who what's what's exactly has been stolen or um, you know, who you know, it doesn't have to be as drastic as who got murdered, but you know, it, it can be, you know, can be easy to find <laughs> these things. Do you, do you, do you have any, any, any stories to share here? Anything that was like um, something that came up when you said, "Wow, okay, now we, now we, uh, now that we see this, and now that we get the the connections there, and now that we can visualize it, something becomes very clear." I mean, obviously, you don't have to share, uh, um, you know, private things, but you know, if if you have some some stories. There will be maybe, or maybe you have something there. Yeah, um, it's hard to share any nuggets without going into detail, which we yeah. can't share. But um, definitely along the lines of social network analysis, uh, ex like getting insight into uh, groups that actively engage in uh, criminal activity, uh, finding the connections between those things is makes the, is a really great application of the graph and then being able to use semantic search similarity search a combined with full text search to locate entities that you're interested in and potential like similar entities is really where the graph shines because you can connect these things together and then using the visualization quickly see all of them at the same time at a, at a holistic level yeah. And like you said, um, fraud is another application we're looking at now. It's like counterfeit products, identifying where they mm -hmm. come from. And the yeah. Like. Yeah, totally. Sounds good. All right, Dinat, let's show how the export. We can work. export here as a CSV or export a SVG. Like we can come here to the project tab and mm -hmm. from data we can export as a graphics are in importing another project in graphics are save excel save well, modifications to neo4j also and categories relationship settings all of this is available to to okay. download cool and then if you if you if you want to share a view, then you um... you can you can save a view here, like uh, found the murder. <laughs> yeah, and and you can share this view publicly, a oh, link. Cool. Yeah, and everybody could interact with the graph. Yeah, oh, that's handy. That's cool. And then you, oh yeah, okay. And then you can, yeah. You can Maybe. update that view and, yeah. and can we can share we share that link in the video description? Is that is that something we could do? Sure, sure, yeah. yes. Yeah, if you send, you can send it to me later afterwards. Something that that uh, that uh, that works, mm -hmm. um, and then yeah. I can I can add it to the to the video description. Actually, actually, it's not gonna work because I, my machine is is a private uh, VPN, and I think it's not going to work. Ah, okay. Well, Disney. maybe you can. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe on the on your website or something. Maybe there's a view uh, that's 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 uh, that's can, yeah. that can be shared. Or if you if you can send me a link sometime later, 
you know that's a yes, good idea yes you yes, could export yes. it and put it on a public yes site. yep can you export can... it right now dna it is a graphics r file just so it's handy yes sure sure just want to make sure we get that before <laughs> uh gxrf yeah cool we can i can add that later to the to the video description uh, so that people uh, can click on it and explore how it looks like. Great. Um, I think that rounds us up uh, of of this session today. Any anything you would like to add uh, before before um, we we wrap it up completely, uh, Ben Dinert? I'm really grateful for your invitation, and it was a pleasure talking about our last achievements, and and it's been a pleasure for us. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Absolutely, thank you very much. Thank you very much for for presenting. Thank you much for spending the time. Thank you for the cool demo. I liked it a lot. It was very cool to find a murder murder uh, <laughs> suspect and then identify who is who, who it was. Even though I'm a little bit sad that he likes uh, board games because I also like board games, so I think that gives uh, the whole hobby a little taint now. But uh, never mind. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, it was good and it was it was great to great to see and great to um, to explore uh, this this data set and very easy to. To, to combine a couple of, uh, of, of lines of text uh, and then drive it in um, in a visualization. So that was, was super handy. Um, so thank you very much uh, for that. I have one more thing I'd like to mention is the upcoming Neo4j training series. Uh, so if you, um, if you are interested in learning more if, if Neo4j and, and Graph Database is something that you want to uh, get more skills in, then we have a couple of workshops coming up in March. They go from very you know, intro level style to uh, more um, Iraq um, application development to geospatial data. So if you're interested in that, have a look at the uh, trainings. There is also a O'Reilly learning session comes up on knowledge graphs and LLMs. Um, they do these in March as well, and you get a 30-day free trial if you use um, our code, uh, which I also post in chat. So you can check that out uh, as well if you like to uh, try. The, oops, now I missed that link. Here, here we go. Uh, if you like to try, um, you know, 30-day trial for free and get these uh, learning sessions um, to do them. And our next live stream is happening next week uh, on the 5th of March, uh, 26th episode of Going Meta is going live. And we will then talk, Jesus Barasas and I, we will talk about knowledge graphs, um, semantics, and all of that stuff. And in the past, we covered a lot of RAG and knowledge graphs and how to do that. Um, better a gen ai application development with the two um, tools together so i think we probably stay in that in that vein so hearing that today i think we we probably we look we look into that a little bit more and that maybe is a good next step for for everybody if you want to learn more but obviously um check out the kinevis website check out the blog uh, check out the the demo that is there uh, available and you know like ben said if you want to know more about kinevis and uh, the demo you just saw seen today, then give them a ping, and uh, uh, you can be a you know subscribed in for a demo and uh, a little trial run, I guess. Cool. Yeah. And with that, thank you all for watching. Thank you for your question. Thank you for participation. Thank you again, Ben and Dinat, for your demo and for your time. And yeah, uh, see you soon um, around. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Bye everyone.